beautiful family of Sussex Squad. How are you all doing? How is each and every one of you doing today? I hope that all of you are having a fantastic day. So thank you for tuning into today's podcast. So last week, there were a lot of royal stories to be talked about. But as far as the UK media is concerned, there was only one royal story worth talking about at length. And it had nothing to do with Kate doing some grade A carrying in the vicinity of the cameras or Prince William opening a $130 million state-of-art cancer center or the king ambling about the Romanian countryside for what he considered a holiday or the 90-year-old Duchess of Kent undertaking her first official engagement in five years. None of these was given any major stories in the UK media. None of these was even talked about by the UK media. All their focus was on Prince Harry. And I think that this even goes to tell you that these other members of the royal family are just so irrelevant. Without Harry and Meghan, I think that the UK media would have nothing to talk about because they wanted Harry and Meghan to leave the UK so that They can stop overshadowing these other members of the royal family. But you can see that even after Harry and Meghan left the UK, they still talk about Harry and Meghan and make them overshadow these other members of the royal family. Well, it's because the work that these people are engaging in just doesn't look like they're really doing some important work. They just love to call these royal engagements. But when you deeply look at this, it just doesn't look like they're doing some real, real work. One thing that is very, very clear is that the UK media want Harry back into uh, the UK so that they can continually talk about him and so that they can still make this monarchy look like it is important. They very well know that no one is interested in the other members of the royal family. No. And I myself didn't even know that these other members of the royal family had actually engaged in some work during last week because nothing was talked about of these other members of the royal family. All the focus was was on Prince Harry and his family. You remember even when uh, Prince Archie received that bike as a gift from a Mad Dogs and Englishman bike shop, all the tabloids and everyone on social media was was just talking about Prince Archie's bike and most of them were actually criticizing Mad Dogs and Englishmen uh, bike shop for just gifting Archie that bike. But that wasn't something wrong. They did nothing wrong. They just gifted a child a bike. But you know, the tabloids and many other deranged people actually made this a big news and even forgot to mention their royals, which they always say are relevant. The fact is, when Harry and Meghan got married, they did lots and lots of work. Harry and Meghan engaged in a lot of royal uh, engagements of work. They were even popular, more popular than the other members of the royal family because they did lots and lots of work. Everything that, that Harry and Meghan did was genuine and everyone could see how smart Meghan was and even how hardworking both Harry and Meghan were. And just by seeing that, the other members of the royal family were jealous, right? Because that is what Harry and Meghan have shown us in the Netflix documentary. The other members of the royal family were so jealous that Harry and Meghan were going to overshadow them. They were already overshadowing them and they could not risk that. They did not want this pair and his biracial wife to overshadow the future king and queen of England. So what did they do? They decided that they were going to do everything in their power to separate these two, to make Meghan go back to the US and that Harry remains in the royal family or in the UK to carry on the duties of a spare. But then, as you can see, God's plan for these two was much, much greater. And even though the royal family and the media still try to fight off Prince Harry and Meghan, and uh, dim their light, you can see that they grow stronger each and every single day. You can see that uh, whatever Harry and Meghan continue to do just shows you how strong they are and how willing they are just to go to any extent to protect the love that they have and to protect their kids. And one fact is that Meghan is everything that the white British establishment want Kate to be. 
But since that will never happen, they instead attack Megan, they bully her, they call her woke and what not. But meanwhile, Kate can barely string a few sentences together. Do you remember this talk? Women don't need to find a voice. They have a voice. They need to feel empowered to use it. And people need to be encouraged to listen. And I think right now in the climate that we're seeing with so many campaigns, I mean, Me Too and Time's Up, there is no better time than to really continue to shine a light on women feeling empowered and people really helping to support them, men included in that. I mean, it, it makes such a tremendous difference. So um, when it's defined with, to not, with, with my crime, but it was locked homelessness, and for me, with sort of, yeah, addiction and things. And I just think being able to sort of come, to, come together to find some sort of common, common ground and, and be able to sort of, um, yeah, draw ideas together and, and, and find a way forward, I think is really, really exciting. I know it's from a uh, some time back, but can you actually remember this day when Kate could barely speak and Megan was so eloquent? And I'm very sure that from that day onwards, they could never risk putting these four people together again. They could see the power that Megan and Harry had. They could see how intelligent Megan was and they could just not risk putting Megan and Kate in the same a uh, place where they could hold a conversation. And I'm very sure that Kate has never recovered from this day. I mean, what was it that Kate was actually talking about? Because even for myself, I can't understand whatever Kate was trying to put across. This video is actually so painful to watch and I can't even understand how Megan could be that strong and keep a straight face. If I, it was me, I would actually not even keep a straight face. I think that... I'd be laughing at what Kate was saying. Megan's reaction was just the coolest. The way she flipped, then she scratched her head, and then she smiled towards the end. I think that she was also lost and trying to figure out if that was English that Kate was talking or not. But all in all, Megan is just an amazing person. And do you remember how the royal reporters were actually trying to defend Kate after all this? They were saying that a Kate doesn't need to do all this PR for herself because all that Kate needs to do is to look beautiful and smile. So that's just how they see Kate. I don't, so I just want you to listen to this by yourselves. I don't know whether whether um, the Duchess of Cambridge has spoken so much on royal she tours. She did speak on her royal so tour. much. Not so much, but mm. I mean, you know, she doesn't... In a way, she doesn't have to project herself so much because she is going to be queen, well, hopefully. Um, she is the next queen, uh, well, sorry, the next queen but one. I think she doesn't need to do all that PR for herself. She can just look beautiful. She doesn't need to do quite... So that means that that is everything that they expect from Kate to just uh, smile and look beautiful and not even do a lot of work uh, to help people or do anything for herself. I just find this so disgusting and I think that they were only saying this because they could see how eloquent Megan was and how intelligent Megan is and that could do a lot of damage for Kate. And even until right now, you can still see that Kate doesn't really engage in a lot of royal engagements or even do a lot of work because even recently they're saying that Kate has done a third of her royal engagements within 12 miles of her home in Windsor Castle since becoming Princess of Wales in September analysis shows. So all of Kate's royal engagements are, are just within her home area. That just shows you how lazy Kate is and William is not even an exception. Both of them are lazy people. No wonder they saw Meghan and Harry as a very huge competition and decided to out them from the UK and Megan really came in and showed how competent she was for the job which ultimately showed how unfit the other members of the royal family were but they could not allow this thus they began to attack Megan and Megan's light truly shone on the incompetence of Kate and I'm just also going to tell you one thing everything that the media keep telling you about uh, Megan's family and stuff that is just what Kate's family is the way they are trying to tell you how Megan's side of the family are this and these 
That is just exactly what Kate's family is. You all have heard stories about the Middletons lately, right? The way they are grifters and all those terrible things that they've done. But you haven't heard such kind of things from Megan's side of the family. And when I talk about Megan's side of the family, I'm talking about Mother Doria because the others, I really can't count them as part of Megan's family since the things they've done to Megan is just so terrible. I'm not really sure what has been happening to Kate and her family ever since uh, the coronation or when Camilla was crowned the queen, but everything has just been going downhill. Nothing seems to be working for the Middletons. All the PR, all the uh, work that the media had uh, put up to try and make the Middletons look like a very honor honorable family is just all gone now. The whole family just looks like a joke and I really can't stop thinking that maybe this is the work of the evil Camilla, right? I can see very well that these Middletons are not even an honorable family but I also can't stop thinking that maybe they were bankrupt from a very long time ago and maybe they are also debt ridden from a very long time ago but but all of a sudden all these stories are coming out and the Middletons are being attacked and even uh, Kate's hideous behaviors are being displayed. This just goes to show you that there's someone behind all this. Of course, I know that all these things are happening but that they have been happening for a very long time. It's only that they had protection and now they don't have that protection. They are being sold to the press and I just can't think of any other person who's selling them out to the press other than Camilla. Well, I don't know what your thoughts are concerning the Middletons whatsoever. Let me just know what your thoughts are. I think at this point, the royal family has actually lacked a scapegoat and the only person that they could see as a fit scapegoat was Kate and her family. And thank goodness Harry and Meghan are so far away and they are happy and they are doing great with their two kids and I just continue to wish them all, all the happiness and I don't want them to ever come back to the UK. Who knows what would have happened if Meghan and Harry continued to stay in the UK. But all in all, let's just continue praying for them and let's continue praying for all the squaddies and let me know your opinion concerning all these. And I'll see you all squaddies on the next podcast. Have a great day. Goodbye.